What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett. Today we're revisiting how to estimate the amount of flat sheets and accessories you need to make metal trim for your project. Our example roof today is Adam's house that we installed a standing seam metal roof on a few years ago. We still have all the takeoffs and field measurements from his house, and we'll use those numbers to estimate the amount of material we need to make trim for his project. You can find our trim estimators at the link below. We have a completely online version for just flat sheets, and we have a downloadable version for a little bit more info. This helps as a second set of eyes or for you to get quick numbers using this tool to help you finish up a bid. Let's take a look at the trim estimator tool from Sheffield Metals and see how it works, and then we'll plug in some numbers from the actual roof. So this is the Sheffield Metals trim estimator. This estimator is designed to work with all of our standard details, which you can see pictures of across the top here. It doesn't matter if the panels are going over plywood B-deck or B-deck with ISO. You can change all the measurements here to build up your system if you need to. Also, if you need to figure out a detail that's not listed out at the top, we're gonna show you how to do that later on using the same spreadsheet. This is gonna calculate how many flat sheets you need based on the trim pieces and the stretch outs that they're based off of. We'll talk about what stretch outs are in a minute, but let's first talk about some caveats that this trim estimator has. This trim estimator does not account for any laps in your flashing, so if you have a 12 inch lap in your valley or a four inch lap in your eaves, this is not gonna account for that in the total length of pieces that you need. The other caveat is that this program doesn't reuse any of the leftover flat sheets. So let's say you use three quarters of a flat sheet to make a certain number of trim pieces. It's not gonna use that other part of the flat sheet in a different section. The more you use this tool, you can kind of take those pieces and use them in different areas, but this does not account for that. Okay, so everything in the blue boxes here are editable. If you click in here, you can type. If you go to a white box, that's auto-generated, so you can't type in there. Again, we have our details across the top and we have our information on the left side. The first thing we'll talk about is stretch out. Stretch out is how wide of a piece of metal you need to make that particular flashing. So these stretch outs can be customized to whatever the project dictates. If you use the standard sizes here that we have listed, probably the only thing you'll need to change is your Z closure, because as your panel height changes, then obviously your Z closure height is gonna change as well. The second line is your flat sheet width. Flat sheets are 48 inches wide normally, but if you're making trim out of coil, you can change this number here to match the coil width. The next line is gonna give you how many trim pieces could be made per one flat sheet based on your stretch out and your flat sheet width. So right now we have a stretch out of eight inches for this drip edge. Our flat sheet width is standard at 48 inches wide. So we're gonna get six pieces of drip edge out of that 48 inch flat sheet. Next is total linear feet, and this is where you're gonna enter the total length of flashings that you need for that particular project. From there, it's gonna give you the number of trim pieces you need to make the total linear feet and the number of flat sheets needed to make those trim pieces. Here we have an option for fasteners because drip edge is gonna require fasteners to use. So right now we have one fastener per six inches and that's based off of the Sheffield standard details. Based on what you have entered there, it will give you a total number of screws. We also have lines for pop rivets. It works the same way as fasteners. The next line down is gonna be tubes of sealant and this is based on an eight inch bead. Details that use the sealant are gonna be your surface mount, your stucco stop, your reglet counter flashings where your head wall and sidewall details go. Same thing goes for butyl tape. Anywhere that our standards call out butyl tape, it's gonna be based on a 50 foot roll. And again, that's gonna be your Z closure, your Z with a kick, your offset cleat, and all of your counter flashings for your head wall and sidewall. After you get all the information entered, it's gonna give you a total down here at the bottom, and that's a good estimate of what you're gonna to need to make the trim package for this project. All right, now that we know how to use the spreadsheet, let's take a look at Adam's takeoff and see how to translate those numbers into the trim estimator. All right, here's a 3D view of the roof. We can see these couple valleys with the up and over gable style. Pretty simple here. Next, we're gonna see the total linear feet for the various sections of the roof. And then here at the bottom, this is the part that we're gonna be dealing with for the trim estimator. This is the breakdown on all the details required for Adam's roof, and it's broken down into pieces. The assumptions and the way this takeoff is based is that these pieces are all 10 feet long. So rake details are 13 pieces, eave details 16, valley five pieces, ridge detail 11 pieces. So rake detail, also known as a gable, is 13 pieces. The eave detail is 16 pieces. This is also gonna correspond to our drip edge on our trim estimator. 
valley detail five pieces, and the ridge detail 11 pieces. This is also known as a hip for hip roofs. So the first one we're gonna start with is the eave detail because that is our drip edge here. That's first on our trim estimator. And we know we need 16 pieces of 10 feet long for a total of 160 feet. So in our total linear feet section, we're gonna type 160 for 160, hit enter. And then now we can see we need 16 trim pieces, three flat sheets based on our eight inch stretch out. Here we can see our screws that we need. One screw per six inches gives us 320 total pancake head screws. And that's basically how all these different lines are gonna work. So if we go back to Adam's takeoff, next one will be the rake detail, also known as a gable. We need 13 pieces of 10 feet long each or 130 total feet. So let's find our gable. Here it is right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter 130 for 130, hit enter. And there we go, 13 trim pieces needed, four flat sheets total. Now what's cool about this is because we added the gable piece in, the estimator already knows that gable also needs a Z closure and a starter cleat. So that's automatically added there for you as well. So if you look over here at the Z closure, it's added in 130 feet because that's the amount that we're gonna need to match the gable. It's also added 130 feet of starter cleat as well to use at the bottom of the gable. So the program does automate some things based on what it knows and the gable is one of them. So you're gonna see this example in a couple more. Back to the takeoff, let's look at our valley detail. We need five pieces of 10 feet each which is 50 feet total. Let's find our valley. Here we go, five zero, enter. We're gonna need our five pieces as mentioned, which is gonna be made out of three flat sheets. It's also added offset cleat. The offset cleat has 100 linear feet added because you need an offset cleat on each side of the valley. So it has already added in the proper amount of offset cleat. It'll do the same for the ridge when we add the ridge in for Z closures. Let's do that now. 11 pieces, 110 feet, find the ridge. Here it is, 110 feet, enter. We need 11 pieces of hip and ridge. That's three flat sheets. And then over here at Z closure, it's added in the appropriate amount of Z closure as well, which is an extra 220 feet of Z closure because you need Zs on both sides of the hip and ridge. All right, now we look at our total. We have 18 total flat sheets needed, 1,865 total pancake head fasteners, about 139 rivets, and nine rolls of butyl tape. And that's how you do a basic estimation of trim on Adam's house. With the head wall and sidewall details, it's gonna automatically end Z closures for you, but it won't automatically end the counter flashing because you have three different options to choose from based on your particular project. And that's surface mount, stucco stop, and reglet counter flashings. So you have to enter those in manually. Let's say you need 100 feet of counter flashing, you might need 80 feet of stucco stop, but only 20 feet of reglet. So that's up to you to fill in. So what if you have a detail that's not shown in the picture here? Well, you can simply use one of these existing lines to create a custom flashing estimation for you. We're gonna use this drip edge section here because it doesn't auto generate anything. If we wanna create, let's say, coping cap, and we want this stretch out to be 16 inches for the coping cap, I'm making it out of a 48 inch sheet. I know it makes three pieces of trim per sheet, and I've got 200 feet of coping to do. It's still gonna give me the same information and estimate everything I need here. Let's say I need to do two screws per every 12 inches because I gotta do one on each side hit enter, and there's our estimation. So you can still use these lines to create any kind of custom trim pieces you need and estimate the number of flat sheets and accessories you need for those. As I mentioned, the trim estimator does not account for laps. So how do you make sure that gets included in your estimate? If you're getting a takeoff provided by Sheffield, we use Roofing Works. So looking at the takeoff we saw earlier, if you scroll down all the way to the bottom, uh, you can see a note right here that's gonna talk about your flashings. And it's gonna say that trim is calculated assuming pieces are 10 feet in overall length and they have a four inch overlap at all joints. So if you're using this takeoff, lap is already really accounted for when you're using the trim estimator in conjunction with the exception of your valley. Per our standard installation details, we use a 12 inch lap in the valley. So if you're calculating that you need a hundred linear feet of valley, you'll need 10 pieces to do that. 
in reality, you're probably gonna need 11 pieces because you're gonna have a foot of lap at each joint. So you have to take those things into consideration when you're doing the total estimate of your linear footage. Couple things to keep in mind. But after all that, we're not quite done yet. There's one final step, and that's to add in a waste factor in case anything gets damaged, in case there's extra drop cuts, because that stuff does happen. So make sure that you order a couple extra flat sheets or whatever you need to feel comfortable with the amount of waste that you may generate for this project. If you want to get these trim estimators, go to SheffieldMetals.com or check out your tech stick as this is loaded on there automatically. If you have any questions, comment down below. As always, I'm Thad Barnett. We'll catch you next time.